And I took the feeder road and just kind of just chilled out. And as I speak to you now, when you say that, I'm understanding that so much of your purpose is to cause people to slow down, settle in, and simply have gratitude for the moments we're in, for the things we get to do simply by existing. And you you said it, purpose is actually, it is aside from our job. It's aside from our title. It really is about kind of making the best of who we are, who we're created to be. So I thank you (laughs) for helping me just even right now, slow down and and settle down. Uh, Even in speaking with you, I notice that my countenance matches yours. It's it's not, I can be very loud, very uh, expressive emotionally. And I think when we're operating in purpose powerfully, it's contagious. Stay connected to gratitude. Hit the follow button right now and join thousands of listeners tuning in each week. We're the gratitude seekers. Come join us. Hi, Gratitude Seeker. Welcome to a new episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Our guest from today is uh, a creator of transformational experiences designed to activate audiences into becoming the biggest, boldest version of themselves possible. She does this through a combination of gifts that she has, and I'm really happy that we, we have her here and to talk with us about purpose, about um, finding our purpose, but also exploring the idea of purpose itself. I'm really curious. Uh, She has a really bold statement uh, regarding purpose, and I'm really curious uh, to explore this together because it's a very important topic for, for all of us. So welcome to the Gratitude Podcast, Jade Simmons. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. My pleasure. My pleasure. So I wanted to keep the, the intro as, uh, as short as possible. Thank you. <laughs> I could go on quite a lot because you've done some amazing things. Um, but I, I wanted to, to keep this brief so that we can um, get into who you are more uh, in the actual interview. So Let us know a little bit more about you, about uh, the amazing things that you've done so that our audience will will get to know you better. Yeah, you know, that's the older I get, that's becoming a harder and harder question (laughs) to answer. What do you do? You know, uh, I make my career, uh, my company is Jade Media Global. And as you said in the intro, we create transformative live experiences. I do that mostly as a keynote speaker. I'm brought in by uh, some of the world's most incredible brands and organizations and conferences. They might be having their annual events or their leadership events or their training events. And I'm the person that comes in. I'm usually the opener to get everybody in the right frame of mind. And I'm often the closer to make sure we're synthesizing all this great information and inspiration we've gotten. But my job is to activate people into doing something they haven't done before. You know, it's so easy to be inspired. We listen to a great podcast like yours and we kind of tuck it away and say, wasn't that awesome? But what are we going to do with that inspiration? And, And my job in a nutshell is to get people to move in ways they haven't before. I'm a classically trained concert pianist. My early career uh, was performing recitals and playing with orchestra and incredible halls. I've had the pleasure and honor of playing at the White House, at the Supreme Court. And that, honestly, Georgian, is all I wanted to do. (laughs) It's just be a (laughs) pianist. I trained my whole life for it. And I slipped up and started talking to my audiences in my concerts. And that revolutionized everything. My career took off. People started booking the piano girl who talks. Uh, and today I, you know, I've had a couple of twists and turns in there. And now as a speaker, a piano comes with me everywhere that I go. 
Uh, and I use music to drive my points home, even as a speaker. Uh, and lastly, I'll say I'm, I'm here with you today because of this book that I've written called Purpose, the Remix. Purpose is my soapbox, much as gratitude is yours. I really want people to, to get it, uh, to own it, and to be able to walk it out. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, so concise and also so, um, so rich <laughs> in, in details and in things that Thank are, you. are important for, uh, for our chat from today. Yeah. Um, because, um, yeah, like, like I said in the beginning, um, living with purpose and, uh, not being quite clear on what, what we're here to do, um, it are two, two quite different things, and mm -hmm. uh, I really love your your statement on <laughs> on purpose. And um, I, I think it, at least in my case, when when I read it, it was very uh, powerful because yeah. it shifts your attention from yourself, and uh, you're you're thinking more about other people. Yeah. So. Uh, do you want me to share it or do you want uh, I'll say it I'll okay. say it I, you know um it's one of, I, I love that that I'm here with you because purpose and and gratitude actually go hand in hand and once you uncover it it turns you into an incredibly grateful person I saw on your website where it says I'm not a grateful person right it's something you have to practice it's a decision you have to make and purpose helps you make that decision over and over a few years back, I said this thing from a stage. I said, your purpose is not the thing you do. It's the thing that happens in others when you do what you do. And you hit the nail on the head. You just, you did two things at once, which they almost sound kind of ironic when you think about it. You first took the spotlight off of yourself and you are able to shine it onto the people that I, I say are assigned to you, that you get to, are privileged to, honored to impact. But at the same time, you also free yourself from people. So I have a lot of people, uh, when we released the book, they said, wait a minute, I'm a recovering codependent. Um, I spent a lot of years releasing myself from being so bound up by people and worried about what people thought. And they they heard this definition and it freaked them out because they thought, oh, no, this makes me tied to people. No, it actually frees you up because once you understand that there's something in the way that you are and the way that you behave uh, and that by default, here's the freedom, will have an impact, then you are free to do that thing. It gives back to you personally, but it's also not driven by people. It just so happens to impact people. So even when you're saying I just want to be me. Awesome. That's what we want. And the funny thing is you just being you will have an impact. And so I like to say I love people too much to be stopped by people. So purpose has given me the freedom to be fully who I am. And then I can trust it's going to have an impact on people. And I also don't have to worry about the people who don't like what I'm doing or how I'm doing it because the people who are designed to benefit from my behavior will do so. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. And I, I, I love the, the first point that uh, that you mentioned, the fact that uh, you start by appreciating the, the opportunity that you have yeah. to serve people one way or another. That's, it's, I, uh, I think that's, yeah. It's huge because you know, that service, again, we have such a wacky relationship with some of these words, don't we? You know, service and even the word people is loaded <laughs> these yeah. days. But um, service, I always say, people like to say, you know, you should follow your passion. And I always say, never do that because passion isn't built to be followed. Passion is a follower. Passion actually wants to come and fuel you as you follow purpose. Purpose is designed to lead. That's why you can be passionate about something on a Wednesday and by Friday you're flamed out on it. It's not a big deal anymore or you're, or it burns you out. And passion, because it's such a fiery substance, can actually burn us out. So when people tell me they're burned out, I know they're usually overdoing an activity 
doing it for the wrong reason or doing it for the right reason in the wrong place, or they're running fully on passion. Purpose is a renewable energy. Every time you serve in it, it gives back to you. So I can't tell you the last time I felt burnt out or exhausted, but I can tell you every single time I operate in purpose, I feel spent, which is different. It's like I've given exactly what I'm designed to give and the people who are designed to receive it have taken that as I've given it out. So it's like a reciprocal thing because it gives back to me. And so uh, purpose, I'm grateful for it because it does it does a whole job on its own. And, and when I'm working, it doesn't feel anything like work. Wow. Yeah. That, that, that's wonderful. And it makes so much sense. Uh, just the fact that we have this this opportunity to um to recharge while actually doing something and um and another thing that that you mentioned before uh that i think is so powerful in many people that i've uh, met that are successful uh of course the idea of success is different from uh person to person but people that i i consider successful um have this in in common the, even though they're doing things for other people, they do it firstly for their own enjoyment. <laughs> it's like, uh, like like with me with the podcast, I, I would do it anyway. Uh, mm. So I understand this quite well. And I think it's, it's so powerful. Some people, for instance, that are uh, great uh, humorists just uh, have fun just by thinking <laughs> about jokes and yeah finding things that are funny and they, yeah. they enjoy just just saying them you know I, I think it's fascinating you're on you're on to something i i say this in the book a lot that purpose is profitable a lot of people come to me for coaching and it might be business coaching and the first thing i want to work on is uncovering what their true purpose is and i always say the, the best way to do that is start with a curious investigation about how you've already been operating so i wrote the book because People have made purpose out to be this elusive thing that, man, you might not ever find it or, you know, it doesn't want to be found. And, and that's because we've been looking for it in the things we do. I used to think that my purpose was to play the piano. In reality, it was what was happening in my audiences because I was the one playing. Because there's a gazillion other classical pianist, right? So what was the ingredient that I was leaving behind and they were picking up? So we start by asking, I always say friends and family, ask them questions like, you know, what happens when I enter the conversation? Or when you ask me a question, what type of answer are you expecting? Or why is it that your friends come to you specifically for advice? And you'll start to hear a theme. You know, you ask your your spouse, your partner, why is it that you love me? And you'll hear something. And for me, I kept hearing, well, I, I feel like I can do anything. I feel like you're going to tell me the truth, whether I, whether I want to hear it or not. Uh, and, and I would notice that, you know, my friends didn't come to me for everything, but when they really needed to hear what they needed to hear, that's when I got the phone call. And when you, when you get that, you then know what kind of advice to give. Okay. My job is to tell it like it is and then to give them the energy to go do something they haven't done yet. And once you get it, you know, purpose then starts to tell you what to say yes to, what to say no to. You start to feel like you're never in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, and this is coming from, honestly, uh, a wallflower. I know my my job is on stage and uh, I'm very comfortable in the spotlight, but in my heart, I'm a bit of a loner. Uh, I hate networking events. I just hate it. When I uncovered purpose, I could then go to those things that I wasn't personally comfortable in and I could operate in purpose. And that made me feel comfortable in that setting. So I'd meet people instead of networking and asking about business, I would ask them questions about themselves and, and we'd start to like uncover purpose on the starter. By the end of that conversation, they'd say, wow. Wow. I feel like I can go do that now, but it's just a networking event or it's just the gym or it's just the grocery store. And so purpose, it, it wants to play with you. It wants to go with you everywhere. It doesn't want to be locked up in the piano 
or in the microphone uh, or whatever your job is, it wants to be with you all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's wonderful because if we think about it, um, it's basically our whole life, right? It's yes. integrated in who we are and in almost everything that we're doing and the way we're interacting with the world and, and like you mentioned, what um, it uncovers in people right? when you when you do th different things when you and um, yeah it, for me it's it's fascinating to, to think yeah. about this because we we tend to be uh, getting back to, to gratitude and mm -hmm. with um, an opposite side of gratitude which is self-criticism for instance Mm. Um, we tend to uh, criticize ourselves and be very harsh and just think about okay, but um, I I have all of these flaws. How? Why would they do this? Or yeah. uh, what can I offer if I if I have all of these flaws and if yeah. I'm not good at this and not good at that? I'm not. I don't have this or that. That I don't know. People should expect or something like this. And when we are thinking about how who we are and what we're doing impacts other people and how we can make them feel, yeah, it's a whole different story. You just get out of your head and um, begin to access those those resources, right? Because yeah. this is one of the things that gratitude does. Also, you you get to see more of the resources that you actually have uh, by your side that you couldn't access because you were just thinking about lack and the things That's that it. weren't okay. Yeah. You know, when you talk about self-criticism, I hadn't thought about it as being on the opposite side of gratitude. But when you think of gratitude as a generosity of spirit, then self-criticism is a stinginess towards yourself, isn't it? It's, it's not giving to yourself. And uh, the reason I'm so passionate about purpose is because it keeps on giving. Uh, and it gets you out of your head. It stops a lot of that comparison game. You talk about success. You know, it's easy as a musician, as a speaker. I'm in an oversaturated field, no matter which way I turn, whether you're talking about being an author or a minister. And it's easy to look to the left or the right and say, well, they have this or they're doing that. Maybe I should do that. But what purpose does is it keeps you locked into your blueprint. I don't have to do it like Georgian does it, right? I can do it how I'm called and designed to do it. It eliminates a lot of insecurities. Uh, and I used to have one where when I started speaking in the corporate world, I was this artist coming in. And I think I felt, well, how am I qualified to speak to this room full of lawyers or this room full of financial advisors? And a lot of the way that I've made my name is because I spend a lot of time studying the industry that I'm going to speak to. I want to know what the pain points are of the people. And my goal is that by the time I leave, you think I might be in your industry, right? And so as an artist who's used to practicing for hours, that that habit of, of wanting to get into the detail came with me. But I would still be the pianist talking to a room full of weapons experts, right? And I remember I used to pack two outfits everywhere I went. One was very corporate. One was really artsy. You know, it had fringe or sequins. And this the, the sequin outfit really was me, but I would feel like maybe I should wear the gray suit because it's a corporate room. And I remember praying about it. And I felt like God said, duh, Jade. And that's how he talks to me, right? He's like, duh. He's <laughs> like, if they needed you to come in and look like them, why would they hire you in the first place? And that was like this big epiphany because if my purpose, which I uncovered, was to activate audiences into being a bigger, bolder version of themselves, why would I come in muted? Why would I come in looking like something they'd already seen? Purpose actually mandates, my purpose mandates me to come in big and bold every time. I should look different. I should sound different. So there's freedom in that. And that's something I'm so 
grateful for, the freedom that comes when we remix our purpose, we free it from this thing we do, profession we're in, title we have. Your purpose is not to be a CEO. Your purpose is what breaks out in the company you serve because you are the CEO. It's what's happening on the ground floor around you. It's what's coming out of others because you're in the position you're in. And then if one day you say, I don't want to be CEO anymore, you didn't lose purpose. You just traded in title. And purpose likes to ride itself out in different vehicles. So wherever you go, it's coming with you. Wow, that makes so much sense. And I, I could I can see it in, in my life in, in different areas because, yeah, we have this thing that we have that actually motivates us, like you said, that fuels us. And we just express it, at least in my case, and I'm sure that our listeners feel the same, we just express in, in different ways, in different things that we do, uh, whether we, we are in education or we are in other fields, we tend to do something very similar, um, even though it's a, it's a whole different uh, yeah. industry because it's it's something that that comes from within. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, wonderful. you know, you said you said earlier about success, and you notice that people who have success tend to be doing things they would do if you didn't pay them because <laughs> they yeah. love it so much. And the irony of that is here I am talking to you who has a podcast in the top one percent, and you're like, I just do this because I love it. Yet look at that. It rises to the top because that genuine love has an authenticity in it that people can relate to. And, and you know, I'm sure if I were to Google podcast about gratitude, there'd be more than one. But there's a very specific way that you speak about gratitude, that your story informs gratitude. I even said I never thought of self-criticism as being on the opposite side. So already in, in our time together, there's been a mindset shift, right? A new understanding that I literally would not have had we not connected in this way. And so for those of you listening in, let that be the proof that you don't have to look around and see that people are doing what it looks like you want to be doing or doing the same thing. You'll go, well, he's already 1%. They don't need me to come on and talk about it. Yeah, because there are ears literally tuned to your voice. And there's a certain way that you're going to teach that's going to touch me that might not reach someone else. Same way, vice versa. And I think that, again, is the, the freedom of knowing you can operate fully in purpose and the people you're supposed to serve, they'll find you. Yeah, definitely. And for me, it was very powerful, especially in the beginning, because um, the people that I learned podcasting from actually had a totally different way of doing it. Like they were on fire. They were like... Uh, talking really loud they they were very energetic <laughs> yeah. and i was thinking oh my god but i'm i'm yeah. totally opposite to that and the beautiful part was that after a while i received feedback that people were actually feeling more calm by listening calm. to my voice and things of this nature and it was wonderful to see that even if i wasn't like them uh, i was actually on the opposite side yeah uh, there were people that were attracted to, to that part, that needed that part much more than uh, that more energetic and fiery way of, That's right. uh, of speaking. And yeah. I think this is, a, this is a good example, and I'm sure that our audience can think about um, similar situations in their life when they thought that they needed to be in a certain mm -hmm. way to mm -hmm. uh, to succeed in a, in a field, but when they are themselves and just express themselves, it's much more powerful it's it's it is literally the impact we are each individually put on the earth for when we show up 100 percent as who we are designed to be there are people who will see you and need to see you because literally your existence will validate things about them that they've been doubting there are people who are shy or soft-spoken or who say wow 
these people are great, but they're a little bit too much for me and they are draining all of my energy, right? And they'll find you and they'll find respite. They'll find calm. And if we were to track back purpose for you, George, and we'd probably find examples of how your presence has created calm. Your insight has turned something that was chaotic into something that was less confusing. I, I could bet money that we would find a track record all the way back to when you were a little one. <laughs> we, we'd find it. You were probably a peacemaker in some way. Uh, and, and things change when you enter the room. Teachers probably loved you if I if I had to guess. You know, we could find those things and 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 we know purpose is working when we get the kinds of testimonials you just described. Uh, for me, when I show up big and, and bold, um, my hair is always different and different colors and different cuts and lengths. And I wear really cool shoes and bright clothing because, again, I'm there to remind you to be bigger and bolder. Now, it doesn't mean go out and get my outfit, get my haircut, stand like I stand and talk like I, I talk. It just means what would bolder look like for you? And can you commit to that? You know, boldness is a it's a it's not a personality trait. It's a choice. It's a decision we make every day. So every time you show up and record, it's a bold choice to say, I believe someone needs to hear what I have to say. And if not, I need to hear it. And that's good enough, too. You know, so again, us getting to show up, it's a privilege to show up as as we are designed and when we do it, we are also giving other people permission to do the same. Yeah, it's so true and it's so powerful. And yeah, I actually have some some affirmations that I uh, that I've recorded that I love listening to myself. Ah, so really yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They um, they feel really good, and I'm sure that they do for for other people also. Mm -hmm. I wanted to to get to to something else. Um, a few ideas back. Um, we've been influenced to to see purpose in in a certain way, uh, especially by what we see on social media, what uh, we see in the movies. Um, how can how can we go from that? to what it really is because the, the truth of the matter is that um, we are influenced quite a lot by by these mediums so let us know your your perspective on this well let me be honest and say i love movies i'm a superhero fanatic i probably have a bit of a superhero complex myself so i love the supermans and the black panthers and these characters that swoop in and save the day i love the autobiographies of the uh martin luther kings and the mother teresas and the, the only problem with that is when that's all we see we think purpose belongs to those guys and gals that if you're not saving the world or rewriting history with some brave, you know, courageous acts of civil rights, and the, we'll start to think, well, who am I? And I say in the book, we we start to think we're, you know, the extra down on the street in the in the star's purpose journey. And we relinquish purpose to people who we think are bigger than us, doing more important things. Than us. And I like to say purpose is one size fits all. There's no such thing as bigger purpose, a smaller purpose, not as important purpose. It's literally how much do you want to operate in purpose? But we all have it. We're, we're all given it. Uh, I, I say before we got here, we come into the earth with purpose and we get to live our life uncovering it and walking in it. You know, the sad truth is I do think most people live and die without ever uncovering purpose or thinking they didn't have it or it wasn't worth following. Worse yet, they discovered it and then denied it, right? And so I think the first step is owning the fact that you have purpose, you are purpose. End of story. And then the second thing is to uncover what your outbreak effect is, what is the thing that's breaking out on others because of how you're operating? And then do 
the fun work of walking in that on purpose. Yeah, and I, I think this is a great exercise for gratitude as well. Like when you uh, become aware of the the impact that you have on other people, um, you get to appreciate yourself more. That that's why I said that uh, gratitude and um, self criticism are on opposite sides. But because when we get to appreciate ourselves and we see our qualities, we get to uh, move through life based on them and we believe them as being more real and more powerful than the the bad things that we say about ourselves and the bad things that we think about ourselves and they lead in s- such different directions don't they oh my gosh uh, you know i do a lot of work as a coach with visionary women of faith now these are women who come in with big belief already they believe in a big God. They believe they're put here for big purpose. Yet when we start doing the work, I am always startled by the negative things they say to themselves. They think about themselves, uh, the negative stuff that they're harboring in terms of fear of their future. And so a lot of our work is in aligning, right? Aligning what we know to be true with how we actually think, speak, behave, and move. And it's it's actual work, right? You have to make a decision to treat yourself with grace uh, the same way you treat others. Most of us treat other people better than we treat ourselves. Uh, and so I think just making the decision, if I'm going to show gratitude and grace to others, I must also show that to myself. Uh, and it's, it is a decision, again, that you have to make quite a few times to get it right yeah exactly and uh, like you mentioned when we start with ourselves we start to appreciate ourselves more and see the 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 qualities that we have and the things that are helping us to um, get to live uh, through our purpose more we get to see that more in others and i'm really curious on uh, how this has worked in, in your life as well. Like, how did you um, start to uncover the the, the qualities, the good things yeah. that you have inside? And how do you see them in others? Because I, I, I feel at least that they're quite connected. When you when you are so aware of the, the, the treasure that you have inside, it's like when you see another person, you see that treasure and you just want to... Want to take it out and uh, get them moving. That's it. It's curiosity. You know, you have to get, you have to be a great listener. And you first want to listen to how you're speaking to yourself, how you're motivating yourself. A a lot of the coaching that I do comes from me paying attention to what I'm saying or doing that helps me achieve a certain thing. And then I see if that also will work for the people that I serve as a coach. But what you said is so profound. When you are absolutely sure that there is something in you that's worth sharing, that is special and that is unique, you believe in advance that everyone else must also have that thing, right? Because wouldn't it be arrogant to think you're the only one (laughs) with this special gift? You're the only one with great purpose. And so, you know, I find that I'm slightly obsessive Uh, when I meet new people, about pointing these things out to them. Again, that listening and that curiosity. I love listening to people. I want to say I love listening to the stuff they're not saying, right? Mm, So a a lot of the people that I coach, we everybody knows there's a certain face that I get when I'm listening beyond what you're saying. And I'm actually hearing a whole other story than the words that are coming out of your mouth. And a lot of my coaching comes from what I'm really hearing between the lines of what you're saying. And so I can hear beyond the small thinking um, to where you should be and how you should be thinking. And that curiosity, I think, makes one a good teacher, a good minister, a good counselor, when you first start from a place of knowing there's something worth treasuring in others and then listening to find out what that treasure is so that you can show it back to them. Yeah, 
That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And I, I think this connects beautifully to what you just mentioned uh, regarding superhero mu uh, movies and the fact that we um, tend to think, so this is, I believe, it, I don't know it's, if it's a negative part or uh, it's just, I don't know, how, how uh, stories are being told. But the thing is that we uh, we look at the, the superheroes and we identify with them usually because that's that's what they want us to um to do when it comes to movies um and we uh we forget the fact that we can still be the ones um outside of that firstly uh, but also uh when we see that in ourselves we see that in others too and it doesn't have to be just a one person thing like like you mentioned it's just mm -hmm. it's not just that um um, there is a Mother Teresa or someone at, at mm -hmm. that level that, that is doing uh, huge things, but that we all have these these treasures, these, the, yeah. these things that we can appreciate in ourselves, that we can appreciate in others, and we can uh, bring them up in, in others as well by appreciating yeah. ourselves and appreciating in them uh, too. So I, I think that this is one of your superpowers, actually, that um, you can see the treasures that you have inside yeah. of you. But when you look in others, you see the treasures, too, and you just want to, OK, let's let's bring them up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, you know, I always say I, I think I'm going to get a T-shirt one day that says I see big people. Remember that movie where they said I see dead people, but I see yeah. big people. And when I'm just in conversation with with even a stranger but when i'm working with people specifically i just see them about 10 times bigger than they see themselves and maybe what brings me the most pain is when i know they can't see it and so yeah. many of their decisions are made based on what they're not seeing about who yeah. they are and so my mission even in, in the book you know i want at least a billion people to uncover purpose, to own it and to walk in it, because I believe purpose by default always carries solutions. You know, there are people who will listen to your show uh, and, and you won't always know this because they won't write a testimonial and they could be on their worst day. They, they could have had thoughts of literally ending it all and they hear your voice, they hear an episode and something in it tells them, you got more in you. Hang on. You have more in you. There's more than you know. And you're just out here making your podcast, moving on with your life, not even knowing that literally as dramatic as it sounds, there are often lives being dramatically, powerfully altered for the better simply by us showing up. You know, I have a friend who's an events planner and she puts on these brunches across the country and she was telling me, she had an event coming up in Dallas and there weren't a lot of people registered. But uh, she said, you know, I thought about canceling. Like, and then I prayed about it and, and she felt like God said, just serve who shows up. Just serve who shows up. At the time, she had about 20 registered. They like to have 60 or 70. She only had a few days to go. I saw her today and I said, how did the event go? She said, you know, 40 people showed up. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh. that's like 20 more. <laughs> Then you plan. And she says, but here's the thing. It's still way less than we usually do. But she said there were so many people in that room that said, I have been waiting for months for this day. I so needed this. I don't even want to leave. This has been so great. My life has changed. What if she had canceled because she was worried not enough people would come? which really is about us, isn't it, right? If, if yeah. only a small number comes, that means I'm not that in demand. I'm not that big of a draw. And if we, we allow ego and pride in, in those very deceptive forms to come in and stop us from simply showing up, we're missing out. You said this, you use this word a lot. We're missing out on the opportunity to serve even one person who needed it. You never know how a life is changed simply by you showing up. That is the power 
of purpose. And it's also to me, the power of gratitude, because when you're grateful for the ability to share the ability to make an impact, you're going to want to do it as much as possible. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You're, you're aware of it. You're, you want to be in that energy and you want to, to share it because it just feels good and uh, it makes you feel good. It makes you um, enjoy your life more because I think when it comes to purpose, um, one of the, at least for me, one of the most important parts, aside from what we do as a profession, aside from what we do as different roles in life is just about enjoying it. Yes. <laughs> we forget to do that, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, oh, that's good. Yeah. It, and it, can be as simple as that just uh, being aware of this this present moment for instance and uh, I'm saying this for all of the people listening and for us to right now just being aware of the amazing at least for me uh, the fact that we can connect even though we are so far away from each other and have this wonderful conversation uh, it's just you know that that moments that that you um you feel alive because you're aware of the the moment itself and where you are and uh, the things that you're feeling the the fact that you have this wonderful experience as simple as it is wow. you know it's it's funny i'm having just a moment over here as i'm realizing a couple of things that happened this morning were not coincidences i don't believe very much in coincidence. I believe so much of what we experience in life is more intentional than we thought. And uh, as I was driving back from the gym early this morning, I usually hop on the highway. And I'll be very honest with you. It took me years to be able to rest, be still in the moment. I was always driving fast and furiously to whatever the next thing was. I wouldn't spend a lot of time regarding the present. I would just, let's go. What's the next thing? Move, move, move. And so this morning, I remember I was about to get on the highway and I heard this voice that just said, why don't you stay on the feeder road today? And, and over here in, in Texas, the feeder road is just a, it's a slower uh, road that's next to the highway. You're going to get to the same place, but you're going to get there a little slower, a little more relaxed. There's some stoplights. And I took the feeder road and just kind of just chilled out. And as I speak to you now, when you say that, I'm understanding that so much of your purpose is to cause people to slow down, settle in, and simply have gratitude for the moments we're in, for the things we get to do simply by existing. And you, you said it, purpose is actually, it is aside from our job. It's aside from our title. It really is about um, kind of making the best of who we are, who we're created to be. So I thank you <laughs> for helping me just even right now, slow down and, and settle down. Uh, e even in speaking with you, um, I notice that my countenance matches yours. It's, it's not, I can be very loud, very uh, expressive emotionally. And I think when we're operating in purpose powerfully, it's contagious. So even you just showing up fully as you are has an effect on me and how I get to show up today in a place of rest and wonder and gratitude. So thank you for that. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm really happy <laughs> to, to hear that. And yeah, I I too believe in synchronicities and in the fact that um, all things are connected, whether we see them or not, whether we understand at this moment or not um and it's one of the the things that we can always be grateful for um this uh interconnectedness that that we have the, the this interdependence um because almost nothing actually works without other people that are taking care of things or have taken care of things so that we can just enjoy this moment like i'm just thinking about the people that have created this these mics the, um, wow. the the laptops that we're using the internet and everything 
we're just able to to enjoy this present moment, this wonderful discussion. Um, thanks to this, all of these people, and we don't think about them. You know, like it's okay. We just have this conversation. We have this technology that we bought, but in it, it's there's a lot of um, interconnectedness and. Um, we're lucky enough to to enjoy this technology, and our listeners also are um, lucky enough to be able to listen to uh, to this and to be present with us, even though they might be listening. I don't know, maybe even six months after we we are creating this uh, right now. So. Uh, yeah, I just think it's uh, it's something amazing that uh, we can be aware of, and uh, also other people's purpose is something that we are also benefiting from at this That's moment. Right. That's and right. We're doing what we're doing because before uh, us getting to experience this technology and our listeners to be able to listen, um, there were people that were that had this purpose and uh, had this vision, you know, to that, that one day people would be able to listen to uh, wow. uh, such podcasts. And now, at this moment, we're benefiting from that. You know, it's, it's amazing to, to think about. It is, you know, it's it goes back to what we were saying earlier, that purpose has solutions in it. And I think sometimes when we're so busy working, we don't realize that we're creating something that a whole future generation might need. And so to think now that we're connected because of someone else's solution, someone else working in their purpose is a really beautifully powerful perspective. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. My pleasure. I love, um, I love this, I, this way of seeing things because it's, um, it's something that we we don't often think about. We we get used to things, and it's just part of daily life. But actually, they're they're pretty special, and um, yeah, even if they're they're simple. But getting back to and uh, to you and to your book, where can our audience get your book? Where where can they uh, get in touch with you? Where can they see you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's called Purpose the Remix, a mind-blowing re-understanding of purpose and how it works. And I fully intend for it to wreck your life in the most wonderful way possible, help you see that you've already been in purpose and now you get to be in it more intentionally. You can get it on Amazon, of course. You can also go to jadesimmons.com and purposetheremix.com where I have some exercises that help you dig into purpose and get even more clear than you than you've ever been. It's also available on Audible uh, as a an audiobook. I love being able to to read the text to my listeners. So I hope you'll enjoy that. Uh, and jadesimmons.com will give you all the other information you need about where I am on social. I like to hang out a good bit on Instagram at official Jade Simmons. But uh, the book is wherever you can find it online, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. And we're so excited to see it create what we're calling a purpose revolution that'll have more people doing what they're called to do and thoroughly enjoying it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here with us, for sharing your purpose with us. And, um, yeah, just for for every single nugget of wisdom that uh, that you shared from your heart with us. Thank you. Well, s- same here. I wasn't the only one dropping the nugget. So thank you for your wisdom <laughs> as well. Thank you for sharing your platform and for having me. My pleasure. Hey, Gratitude Seeker. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this interview. I really appreciate it. And If you could think of one person that would also benefit from it, share it with them. It might actually be the inspiration that they need to make their day or maybe even their life much better. Thank you so much once again. This has been Georgian Benta. Don't forget to keep seeking and spreading gratitude. 
Hi, I'm Ellie Krieger, host of the podcast, One Real Good Thing, where we dive into one thing you can do today to propel your life in a healthy direction. In conversation with food, nutrition, and lifestyle experts, plus celebrity guests and friends, it's all about mapping a path to a joyful, healthy life full of flavor, one real good thing at a time. Find me at digitantpodcasts.com or wherever you get your podcasts and visit elliekrieger.com for more delicious content on one real good thing.